okay students uh, today i am going to demonstrate you uh, how to start the experiment of ce amplifier here so i think you all, all observe this uh, circuit diagram and a pictorial diagram which you are going to implement on your breadboard in a systematic way now see that before starting the experiment i already explained in the part one that connect all instruments in a systematic manner as in the circuit diagram you see that left side a function generator at the middle of the uh, arrangement a power supply and output on right side that means cro is on right side okay see that it is connected in the same way now you see practically how i implemented this see the left side a function generator I switch on that. That's all. I don't know what is the input voltage. I have to set at the middle a power supply here for 5 volt, and right side a power CRO, and at the front of my chair uh, a circuit diagram which I a CE amplifier which I rig up according to this pictorial diagram, and you can see all the details here. Here you can see that R1, R2, collector resistor, emitter resistor, capacitor and a transistor and it is switched on. Now I directly connect the function generator to the input of the uh, amplifier and a power supply according to that I, I select that on top one as plus VCC and the bottom one as ground and the output which I collect, I am supposed to collect at the output of the CRO on at the collector of the transistor. So it is on right side. Now, first work you have to set the input voltage. See, I directly connected to this point at the this point and from the function generator. So I already told select a mid range frequency in the initial stages, say 10 kilohertz, something like this select this and go for 10 kilohertz or above even up to 200 300 something like that okay set your own no problem and the amplitude adjustment according to our uh, requirement i have to adjust 20 millivolts input from the function generator say i directly connected on this cro and uh, and let's say that uh, I will put something actually I need a 20 millivolts here so I have to go for a range here see this here it is 50 and it is 20 so I have to display one division here so what I have to do adjust the function generator range and bring it to one division and adjust this it is almost one division so one division into 20 millivolts here you can see that the position is 20 millivolts so 20 millivolts is the input now you have to check the output remove the uh, uh, CRO's wire and connect it to the output of the transistor that means collector of the transistor now you can see on the CRO the display goes beyond the screen that means the signal is amplified I adjust that attenuator control here you see that. see now the range is 0.2 volts it is almost covered the 8 divisions so it is amplified so this is how you have to check the circuit conditions and you can display so selecting the while selecting whether the circuit is working or not to confirm that you have to select a mid-range frequency from the function generator and switch on the power supply set the input voltage to 20 millivolts and if your circuit is your design is correct then the next moment you will get amplified output okay now circuit everything is working perfectly now how to start the experiment okay let us see so we observe that the circuit is working now very next thing is 
to observe and fill up the frequency response characters in the relevant table of columns. So there is a frequency column here which means starting from 50 hertz to maximum 2 megahertz and uh, how to start is the question here. See in the overall diagram in this uh, output characteristics there are three ranges you will get here. You can see the first one is uh, low frequency range then the mid range mid frequency range and second third one is the high frequency range. So what you have to do is to first you have to find out what is mid frequency range. Mid frequency range is nothing but three decibels less of the maximum gain. So to find out that I already explained that what is the procedure here. Say in this chart I already explained how to do that one. First you find out the mid range gate or voltage and multiply with 0 0.707 and find out that value. Once you find out that value, you have to adjust the function generator and find out at lower frequency side and as well as upper frequency side and find out the mid range frequency. Okay, let us start that part. So <coughs> the third step, uh, now I select the mid range around 20 kilohertz and the power supply switched on. I got the mid range amplitude 1.5 divisions here. You can see that there are three divisions, one, two, three divisions. Now I changed uh, this uh, volts per division scale at 0 0.5. So 3 into 0 0.5, what I got it and multiplied with 0 0.707, I got 1.06 volts okay that is the maximum constant voltage gain i think you understand this so this voltage i have to bring at lower frequency side that means roughly you take it as one volt only say that this is one volt here one volt so i am going to get roughly one division that means here the scale what I selected here it is 0.5 that means I have to bring this two divisions so 2 into 0.5 it becomes almost 1 volt okay so now I am going to bring the function generator frequency to lower frequency I am going to decrease this you see that I am going to select this range lower frequency side and I am going to reduce the frequency and I have to get see that I have to get two divisions now. I am reducing the frequency in the function generator. I can't see that simultaneously both. I can show on one side. Now it is reduced, the amplitude is reduced. Now little bit I have to reduce it. That means I have to increase. See. Now what is the amplitude now? Two divisions. So these two divisions multiply with 0.5 it is nothing but 1 volt according to the our calculations okay so according to our calculation it is 1 volt 1.06 so consider 1 only so i adjusted the function generator to lower frequency side now it is nothing but f1 that means lower cutoff frequency of the band bandwidth okay so what is the frequency find out it is 503 hertz okay so the f1 is 503 hertz note down that next work is to find out f2 that means upper cutoff frequency to so for that the same voltage you have to get but in the upper frequency side so this is lower frequency side i got 500 uh, roughly around 500 hertz that is f1 now you find out adjusting the function generator to higher frequencies okay so i am going to change this range and it is 5 kilohertz and uh, still more i need it seems so 47 kilohertz still you see that i am going to increase the frequency range to higher level 
and I need two divisions here. See, it is reducing, start to reduce. I think one more step I had to go. See, it reduced. Now I am going to adjust the frequency to get two divisions. I think it is two divisions. Let me see. It is one division. Still, I have to bring it a little bit more. That means I have to reduce the frequency here in function generator. Okay. Now you see that this is almost higher frequency side 2 division into 0.5 again the same 1 volt peak to peak we got it. So now this frequency of from the function generator you please note down that is called F2. So let us see what is the frequency 345 kilohertz please note down this in your tabular column. So, the next step uh, I have noted down from the function generator output voltage after multiplying with the 3 volt uh, multiply 0 0.707 of vivo I got 1.06 roughly around 1 volt. Now, I adjusted the function generator to get this value on the CRO at lower frequency side 500 hertz and again I adjust the function generator to higher frequency side to get again the same value 345 kilohertz it is kilohertz ok now you can calculate the difference between these two like this that is called as a bandwidth so bandwidth here is 345 kilohertz minus 500 hertz I got 345.5 kilohertz so this is called the mid range mid frequency rate this is very important while plotting the graph this is how you have to take now between 345 hertz to 500 kilohertz uh, 500 kilo 500 hertz you will get a constant output you understand you get the constant output so how many readings you can take start first reading 500 hertz then 600 as shown in the chart you see this this so roughly around 500 hertz from here to maximum I got around uh, uh, 345 okay let us consider 350 kilohertz here so this range this range is actually called the mid range so you how many readings you can take not required for taking 25 30 readings here because you will get a constant output start from that f1 jump to 600 then 1k then 10k then 100 200k then 300k then reach the final 350k roughly around this so this is over up, approximately around the 10 readings even not less than it is less than 10 readings only now what you have to do is reach go back to again to this f1 and take some y four or five readings here again above that f2 you take some five to six readings and sign off from the experiment so this very simple experiment uh, i observed that many people were taking the overall readings right from 50 hertz to 2 megahertz more than 50 to 60 70 readings you need not to do that this is the exact way to find out and a simple method to plot the graph and take the readings you understand this i hope uh, this will help you in this case and uh, plot the graph using semi-log sheet as per your um, manual and calculate the bandwidth f1 lower cutoff frequency f2 upper cutoff frequency then bandwidth gain and many more if any required you can keep on doing i think uh, this part you understand the second part I, I, I think uh, not second part it is uh, I think fifth part you are going to calculate the uh, actually the input and output impedance uh, that we will discuss in the next part ok so let us stop this part here and we will proceed for the next part how to calculate the input and output impedance that will end this experiment thank you
So to show that uh, for initial setup, I have to turn the potentiometer and adjust that to the 0 ohms. Now it is showing 1.3 kilo ohms. Now I am going to adjust this shaft and bring it to 0. Now let us monitor this. I am going to turning this that is reducing. Yeah, I have to bring it to 0. It is almost 0. Okay, now you see that I disconnect that uh, function generator input and I ported this here and uh, I insert one part of the potentiometer uh, to the coupling capacitor, another to the function generator now. Because now this is almost zero resistance, you will get the same output as shown in the circuit. Now this is almost three divisions are there at the, that is maximum voltage. Okay, so here three voltages, three divisions. So when you're calculating the input and output impedance, you need not to bother what is the voltage and all those things. You see how many divisions it covers. Okay, one, two, three. Exactly three divisions. If covers four divisions, no problem. If you cover one division, no problem. So just calculate how many divisions are there as a maximum output you are getting at the mid range. So you have to select your mid range here. So I think you understand this. Now we are going to turn the knob of the potentiometer. You see that I am going to turn this knob and I have to monitor this. I have to bring down this output to half of it. That means one and a half division. I have to bring it down. You see, it is, I am adjusting the potentiometer. It has become almost one and a half division. So let us adjust this and see that it is two divisions are there. Still have to uh, increase the potentiometer resistance so that it will come roughly one and a half division again we cross check it I have to reduce a little bit more ok I think this is correct ok you can see that it is almost one and a half division ok at this stage you remove the potentiometer and measure the resistance so I am going to disconnect this and without altering the shaft position, I am going to calculate the resistance and you can monitor this on the digital multimeter that is as an ohmmeter. I will show this now. Uh, now you can see that uh, in the ohmmeter, the potentiometer value is around 4.06 kilo ohms. So this is actually a inputting input impedance that you can note in your record. I think you understand this. Now you see that I am going to remove this wire and connect it back to coupling capacitor. The circuit is now as before. Now you monitor on this CRO, you are back. The, with the maximum output of three divisions here. Please do remember that while doing the input impedance, you need not to measure the amplitude. What is amplitude exactly? Number of divisions you have to take it out. Okay. Now you have come back to the original condition. Now we are going to show. Now I am going to show how to measure the output impedance. See the circuit diagram here. Again, see the circuit diagram for output impedance measurement. Now, the initial setting of the pot is to the maximum level. Okay, that means the 10k pot we are using, turn the shaft and bring it to maximum and connect parallel to the amplifier circuit. Without removing anything, just connect parallel to the output and see what happens on the CRO. Now we can see that I adjusted this potentiometer and the value is 10 kilo ohms. Now connect this potentiometer parallel to the output of the amplifier section to measure the output impedance. 
uh, now you can see uh, I'm connecting these uh, parallel to the output with respect to ground now it is connected so this parallel to the ground is very important here don't connect anyway some other place simply connect this potentiometer like this and you see that it is connected the output is also connected it is you can connect the parallel output means across the uh, uh, CRO or between coupling capacitor and ground both are same now you should remember that this value should be 10 kilo ohms I already explained that now you monitor at the output again we are getting almost three divisions if it is less than that you don't bother what it is there and you can adjust the amplitude of the function generator also bring it to three divisions okay so it is almost three divisions if it is uh, okay it is almost three divisions okay so you can adjust as uh, you can make a small adjustment in the function generator also or whatever you are getting note down that how many divisions are there now you are going to adjust the potentiometer and bring it to half of the value so three divisions means one of the shape. now you see that i am going to turn this knob and you can monitor this the voltage will get decreasing see that. can you monitor this so one and a half division you have to bring it down so we will adjust this uh, control up down control and uh, let us position it these two divisions are there so I have to bring it down a little bit okay I think uh, it, it is okay uh, it, it is acceptable I can raise a little bit more I think it is okay you see that one and a half division okay now disconnect the potentiometer and again the same procedure measure the resistance and note down that is the output impedance so that is the end of this your experiment it is very simple method if you follow this i hope that students will uh, get benefits from this method and the, they will be successful in examination as well as in lab tests thank you so i connected this parallel to this see that potentiometer is connected just i am holding that that's a parallel to that ohm meter now i got 1.3 kilo ohms so that is output impedance this is how you have to conclude the experiment thank you